A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, and uh, this is another video in my, um, my work clock series. And um, just want to give a quick shout out to uh, JLC PCB once again for providing these beautiful uh, PCBs as well as uh, their support in sponsoring my videos. Okay, yeah, so um, I just want to do a quick video this time to show you improvements I have made um, in two key areas. So. One of them, just going to take this apart, um, the 3D printed frame that I made last time. Uh, you can see here, I'm, I'm an absolute idiot, uh, by the way. Um, I miscounted the, the number of, um, of columns, and there are only 12, but for some reason I did 13 the last time. You can see it doesn't quite line up. Um, so in the new version, which is this top one, I have the correct number. So it'll be the, the right one. This is a correct one. I have the right number of holes and they're perfectly spaced. And um, another thing that I corrected, you can see the new one's quite a bit taller. Well, a little bit taller. Um, I didn't leave enough room at the bottom for uh, connectors in the bottom of the PCB. Uh, so it didn't actually fit. So you can see this pretty easily. Um, if I were to take the board, try to fit it in here, there's just not enough room. It's like right up against the bottom. And uh, also the main issue of not having the correct number of uh, columns there. New one, you can see, fits in perfectly. It fits flush. All the LEDs like slot in uh, to the actual holes. Uh, there's enough room for the buttons. Uh, I'm going to actually bring this bottom, make this hole a little bit smaller because as it is right now, when you fit um, this board in, there's a bit of a gap. So I'm going to fix that. That'll be an easy fix. The holes that I put in for the actual corners of the board so that you can poke wires through and solder it I'll work perfectly, so I'm going to keep that as is. And there's a little cutout for um, the if you want to solder a header onto here. Uh, one thing that I did screw up on the PCB design, um, you can see here I had to put an extra resistor for the, um, the clear, um, well, the reset line basic for the, basically for the microprocessor. And um, the reason was I was intending to actually use the internal uh, software selectable um, configuration reset line. And uh, for some reason, when I use that, the processor continually resets and I have issues um, with the display flickering and whatnot. So I just opted to, okay, I'm, in the next version, I'm going to actually put a resistor you know, right next to the micro. And uh, additionally, I made a stupid mistake. Um, I had the real-time clock hooked up um, to a cap. And to what I thought was the 5 volt um, of the entire board, the, the VCC, 
And actually, I ended up I accidentally selected a a different um a different designator uh, with an eagle. So I had two different uh, five volt designators, and eagle never told me that they weren't connected because it thought that they weren't supposed to be connected. So that's a silly mistake that I made. So I'm gonna do that. I added these uh, spots for resistors uh, if I wanted to limit the brightness in hardware, and it turns out that I ended up doing it in software anyway. So these are kind of redundant, so I'm just not going to have these in the new version. Um, it's not really necessary since I'm I'm kind of limiting the duty of uh, the display drive anyway. So and yeah, uh, so everything is good to go. Software wise, I'm like 99% there. So I just wanted to do a quick little demo. You can see on the front uh, board, I soldered. Uh, 0.1 inch pin headers. I took uh, pliers and I pulled the pin pins out of the uh, the plastic part, and I just soldered them straight, and uh, so that it's kind of smooth on the front, so it's not very pokey. And you can see that fits absolutely perfectly. You can see it just kind of slots in there. And yeah, uh, basically the the biggest change that I've made. Um, is with this 3D printed bracket. And I'm gonna do a quick demo here. I'm just gonna assemble this. And um, I was worried, there were a couple comments that um, had very helpful suggestions in, um, about light bleed and whatnot. And I was worried that these 3D printed brackets wouldn't be good enough. And so I just wanna give you a quick demo of exactly how it looks. And we'll go through the software very quickly as well. See, it does this self-test when you first boot it up to show you all the LEDs working. You can see here, uh, this is decently bright enough. It looks a little brighter on camera than in real life. And you can see that there is a tiny little bit of light bleed, but this is perfectly usable. Like, I find this acceptable. Um, in the dark, it's maybe a little more um, visible, but still, that is not bad at all. That looks really nice. And um, you can adjust the brightness by pressing uh, the minute button. And you can see it lights up. When you press and hold, it lights up the level. And there are 10 levels. So up top would be the brightest. And then down is the dimmest. And so you can see this is much brighter. And you can see that the light bleed now is a lot more visible. Um, but still manageable. Um, I think like an optimal place to keep it is um, right in the middle. So like right, right around there. And there is a bug still in the software. I forgot to erase after it draws uh, the current brightness on here. I forgot to erase it. So I'm going to have to, um, it's like one line of code that I have to add in to, uh, to stop that bug. But anyway, yeah, you can see this is time mode. So it's saying it's 4, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's 4, 13 p.m. And that's the time. To set the time, uh, you have to press and uh, both hours and minutes, and um, it will actually remove the it is. So let me just go through, and it was like 4.14. And there we go. So it is 4.15 now p.m. So yeah, um, next up is uh, if you just press the hours button, you'll go into animation mode, and this is where I added quite a number of animations that are pretty interesting, I think. So in this mode, you can see it's sort of like a reigning matrix digits or letters falling animation mode. And this is uh, all generated pseudo randomly. Uh, so every time you start this up and the pattern isn't fixed, it's not repeating or anything like that. So it should always pretty much be different. And my pseudo random function is seeded by the current time basically just uh, adds up and multiplies like all the the seconds, the minutes, and the hours count. It it uh, adds and multiplies those to like a number between zero and uh, like twenty thousand or something like that. So it, there's enough variation in that that you shouldn't really ever be able to see the exact same sequence twice. Uh, so anyway, we press um, if we press hours again, we go back into the time display mode. But if we press press minute, then um, it'll actually increment uh, the animation mode. So you can see here, this is a Pong, and every time it hits a wall, the uh, speed is randomly generated as well. So you can see it speeds up and it slows down. Press this again. This is a random, like a 
water droplet ring effect. And this is completely random. Sometimes they occur off the screen and you only get, catch uh, glimpses of them on the screen. And if we press this again, this is a Tetris mode, a falling brick. I don't have it actually like uh, landing and creating bros and whatnot. Um, I could easily modify it to do that, but it'll randomly like decide to rotate or not. And also the pieces that are selected are random as well as their locations. Just a neat sort of thing. I thought it would be cool. Uh, press this again. We have that uh, display test where it's just a racing beam. Press it again. This is a disco random mode. <laughs> um, this is pretty trippy looking. But yeah, press it again. Um, random pixels will appear. Random ones will disappear. Um, just sort of neat to look at. Press it again, and we have Pong. Um, well, one player Pong this is kind of similar to, I guess, like Arkanoid, uh, but no bricks at the top disappear. But yeah, basically the paddle follows the ball. The ball will bounce around based off of predefined physics of like uh, speed and whatnot. And there's that. Press it again, and we're back into the, uh, the matrix or the rainfall mode, pretty much. Want to go back into time mode? Just press this first button here. So now it's 8, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's uh, 4, 18 p.m. So yeah, anyway, um, this worked out pretty well. You can see right there, it's uh, perfectly visible. You can definitely easily solder different colored LEDs for different effects. Yeah, so just have to fix a few of the bugs in the software for the, I think it was the Pong and the um, the bouncing ball example. Sometime, I think I, uh, I'm, I'm not checking all the corner cases, once in a while when you enter the mode from a different animation mode, it'll uh, pretty much not crash, but the display animation is static and it doesn't advance. Um, I think what's happening in that case is the random uh, ball location and the paddle location that are generated uh, pseudo-randomly, I think they're generated in an invalid portion of the screen. For instance, I have it set so that the paddle can't be off screen and the ball can't be off screen off screen obviously um and i think maybe i'm not checking the bounds correctly for the random generation and that's happening and it's freezing the animation of course you can always get out of the mode and re-enter it and the chances are that it'll work the second time are pretty high um so i'm gonna have to find out exactly what's causing that using you know the insistent debugger and step through the routine and see if i can catch it happening and so I can perform that check to, to make sure that that won't happen in normal operation. But yeah, you can see all in all, um, this looks absolutely stunning and uh, super happy with uh, how everything turned out. Um, definitely, I, I love the animation modes. Um, I have, you know, with all this programmed and whatnot, I only have, I think, a little more than half of the Flash um, consumed so i have something like um 8k of flash total and i think i'm using all i think i'm using maybe like 4.7 something like that so i have like maybe 3k uh, of flash left which is actually a pretty decent amount so i can add even more animation modes that means or add more features um pretty much using all the io there are a few free io left um, so I could add an alarm mode. Um, I have to fix definitely the um, time set mode. Uh, it's too easy to accidentally um, either entering or exiting. It's really easy to accidentally change the time when you didn't intend to. So definitely going to have to fix that. Anyway, um, if you guys are interested in me providing this um, as a kit, uh, pretty much you would just get a PCB like this and all the components, or maybe I'll pre-solder the, uh, the main IC. And um, yeah, um, let me know. It would come with a 3D printed stand and whatnot. Everything pretty much you need to make it. Um, you just provide, you know, the USB cable or whatever. And so yeah, if you guys are interested in something like that, let me know down below and I'll, I'll think about setting up some kind of pre-order system or whatever. Uh, but got to fix those issues first. Um, once again, I'd like to thank uh, JLCPCB. Um, I've been thinking of doing this kind of project for quite a while, but um, making these PCBs used to be pretty expensive, but definitely not anymore. It's absolutely insane. 
And the fact that um, they're willing to sponsor me so I can do multiple revisions of boards, especially since I'm going to have to fix uh, some of these issues that I found, uh, definitely hugely helps uh, develop the hobby as a whole. Uh, not just for me, but channels like uh, like mine who do kind of hobbyist electronic design work and whatnot. Anyway, I've rambled on for quite a while. And um, let's see what time it is, actually. That's uh, uh, 4.22. Anyway, um, rambled on for about a good 15 minutes. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any further suggestions or whatnot or things you want to see, uh, put them down below and I'll see if I can uh, make it happen. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, big thing is I'm actually recording on a, uh, a new mic, a lavalier mic that I just got uh, for a review. So if the audio sounds different uh let me know if it sounds better worse or what um i'll take a listen to this recording as well after while i'm editing uh, but just let me know what you guys think and i'll see you in the next one bye